Hey there, fight fans. In today's video, Sean Strickland destroys Machine Gun Kelly, but MGK, well, he kind of fights back. Also, Dana White cannot believe that Marab Davalashvili used scissors on his own stitches. I think he's just f***ing with me now, to be honest with you. Rachmanov believes that Kamaru Usman should be ashamed to be asking for a title fight after three defeats in a row. Bilal Muhammad brutally trolls Kamaru Usman with an AI song. And as for Usman, he has responded to fans labeling him as washed up, making it clear that he is far from done. Meanwhile, Magomed Ankalaev and Alex Perea recently reached a boiling point. Ankalaev categorically denies turning down any offers to fight Alex for the light heavyweight title, and even called him a liar. However, as they say, the internet never forgets. Fans were quick to remind Ankalaev of his earlier claim that he was offered a fight with Poetan at UFC 300. So who is telling the truth? Well, let's find out. MGK and Sean Strickland are two personalities from very vastly different worlds, but their paths crossed in a combustible way earlier this year. When Strickland attended a power slap event in February, he confronted the rapper, branding him a weirdo. MGK, who has a history of run-ins with fighters, most notably his near brawl with Conor McGregor in 2021. Strickland then kept the feud alive in the days that followed and reignited it during a recent appearance on Eric Nixick's podcast where he once again took shots at both Kelly and Megan Fox. And during an appearance on the Impulsive podcast, Kelly fired back, instructing Strickland to keep his name out of his mouth and slammed him for constantly talking about him. As, <laughs> as a person who's just giving you big bro advice, learn this, shut up and don't <laughs> don't speak on me anymore and live your life but you won't and i'm going to continue laughing at you because you're a fucking idiot however strickland not one to ever back down continued the feud on x he mocked mgk's image ridiculing his lifestyle choices and past struggles really showing no sign of easing the tension between them yes i'm gonna tell you all a secret why i laugh and giggle away and so like i look like i don't take it serious because a motherfucker is looking me in the eye and they look at me aggressive like if I don't laugh and joke and smile there's something in my fucking brain that switches and I want to just fucking do shit that will get me banned off Instagram so I'm always laughing and joking to help keep me in check Dana White has once again expressed his bewilderment at the wild behavior of bantamweight contender Marab Davalashvili this time, White's attention was caught by a video of Marab removing his own stitches with a large pair of scissors, just weeks before his much-anticipated title fight against Sean O'Malley. I think he's just f***ing with me now, to be honest with you. All right, we'll leave you ever that. see the scissors they take stitches out with? It, they don't look like those. You. They're tiny, and they have that thing on there so you don't cut yourself. You know what I mean? They can slide them up under the stitches, and you don't cut yourself. This dude had, like, f***ing bush shears that he was using uh, that you you know you trim your fucking bushes with the gardeners use whatever in a recent podcast episode Suga shared his prediction for the bout imagining a scenario where he hurts Marab early on before delivering a knockout blow Sean I know you aren't overlooking Marab but how do you you think you get it done realistically left hand the choppers I feel like I'm gonna either <sighs> brutally well, I know I'm going to hurt him eventually. At one point, I'm going to hurt him. But then it could turn into a brutal just KO. Just an absolute not a good weight cut, not a good camp. And he just gets slept bad like that jingling. Oh. Like one of those where it's like five or six punches to add up. And the last one just puts him into the canvas, snoring, nose crooked, <laughs> cat oh, screaming. Uh-huh. His cat's at home. <laughs> Seeing daddy get, yep. yeah. But will O'Malley be able to knock out Marab? For example, as Henry Cejudo can attest, taking on the Georgian machine is no easy task. Marab's wrestling it was more the fact that I didn't wrestle the whole camp, and then now he's bringing in the wrestling, and it fatigued me, dude. Like the first round was perfect and brilliant, but even after that first round, I knew I was in trouble, dude. While it might feel like disrespect on the surface, maybe it's just his belief. This young man has managed to not only become a champion, he's managed to become a star, and part of it is because of 
his I don't really care type of attitude. You talk about Sean O'Malley's Danny Jim and knock him off very early. Looking into the details of the fight, there can be some opportunities for that to happen. Because do you remember when Murat fought Marlon Marais? He was hurt very badly, very early. He was able to recover. Sean O'Malley sees that and goes, there's no way that you survive what I hit you with if you allow me to hit you in that way. But the way it comes off to the opponent probably would feel disrespectful. I love the way that he's approaching the fight and the way he's playing the game because I do believe that mental has to be a part of this because you got to find a way to make Marab do something wrong. September 14th, UFC 306, the Sugar Show versus Marab at the Sphere, live on pay-per-view. Davalashvili's relentless pace and durability make him a formidable challenge for anyone in the bantamweight division. Shavkat Rachmanov firmly believes that he is the rightful number one contender and next in line for a shot at the welterweight title. With an impeccable 18-0 record and a perfect finish rate, it is really hard to argue otherwise. Since making his UFC debut four years ago, the Nomad has dismantled every opponent in his path, including established names like Neil Magny, Jeff Neal, and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. As he stands on the verge of his first UFC title shot, Rachmanov is confident there is no one more deserving. He even dismisses former champion Kamaru Usman, who recently campaigned for a fight against new welterweight champion Bilal Muhammad suggesting that Usman should be embarrassed to ask for a title shot after suffering three consecutive losses. Yeah, man, what do you make of Kamar Usman? He's been trying to sort of insert himself a little bit into this whole title race. Uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, I don't know what he's thinking about. Like, I think it's kind of shame to ask for a title shot after losing three fights straight. Like, in my head, I cannot uh, get my head around it, but it is what it is. Now, what do you all personally think about this? Do you agree with Rachmanov? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. Bilal Muhammad has been on a trolling spree, this time targeting Kamaru Usman with an AI-generated song. Kamaru's in the locker room, lacing up his worn-out gloves, thinking about that golden bell, all his dreams of love. He's lost three fights in a row, his knees are giving in. Leon dropped him with a headshot, left him wondering when. The law's up there champing at the bit, ready for a fight. But Kamara feels the aches and pain deep into the night. He's got the heart of a lion, but his body's just a shell. In the octagon of memory, he's caught in his own hell. Now, as for Usman, he has responded to fans labeling him as washed up, making it clear that he is far from done. You know, you stack up all these injuries over time and it starts to diminish your performances to where people start to forget just how good you are, just how much time you've spent uh, building your career, doing the things that made you successful to where they start to, oh, he's washed, well, which is how disrespectful are MMA fans. How disrespectful are they, oh, he's washed. Oh, he can't do this anymore. He's not that. Oh, they were saying that before John Jones came back in there and fought uh, uh, Surreal Gun. And as you also know, the conflict between Magomed Ankalaev and Alex Perea has recently reached a boiling point. Ankalaev has strongly denied rejecting any fight offer against Alex for the light heavyweight title. And in response to the Brazilian's comments, he has vowed to test Perea's chin and finish him when they eventually face off. Alex Perea, can you please tell me which fight I did not accept to fight with you? Uncle I have posted on his official X account. I'm going to KO Rakich, and after that, I will expose you, especially your chin, because you have a weak one. But as they say, the internet, well, it never forgets. And fans were quick to remind Uncle Liev of his earlier claim that he was offered a fight against Poetan at UFC 300. This is what Alex is referring to when he says that Uncle Liev turned down a fight. Oh. 
Мне вообще-то предлагали этот бой с Перейрой на этом турнире, так как у нас был священный месяц Рамазан. Мне решили как отказаться от этого боя. Но... However, even his manager, Ali Abdel Aziz, disputes this, insisting that such a fight was never on the table. So, who is ultimately telling the truth? What do you personally think? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. This is all for today. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it is very important to us. And thank you all in advance.